My name is Tolstoy. And who are you? How uninteresting. I'm ashamed that I even asked you in the first place. Otherwise, I would have been able to tell you who asked. Now, I am assuming that you have a request for me. Everyone who comes here has a request for me. I am Tolstoy, and Tolstoy knows everything. You want a way out of the woods, and you want a way to camouflage yourself from the other deer. Makes sense. So you're a human. They disguised you pretty well, but your sense of culture gives you away. But I will help you. The only question is, what will you help me with? The only thing I ever ask from those that I help are contributions to my library. That way I can further educate myself. Will you be furthering my library's expansion? You can do that by leaving books at the edge of the forest. I will, resp I will expect compensation, and if compensation is not given to me if I help you, I will find you. And I will hunt you down. Is that understood? Good. So do you need my help? And do you understand the price of receiving my help? Good. That is all I request you keep in mind. Now, what I'm going to be helping you with is... First, let's start off with how you get out of the forest. And then we'll start on the more difficult challenge of you assimilating into the culture well enough to march through the forest, the deer forest territory, in order to leave and escape out of the woods. Now, I have this book with me. With this book, I will be able to tell you what sort of plant life to avoid because there are some dangerous plant life as well and also which animals to avoid obviously you know to avoid the birds everyone is afraid of the birds don't know why there is a movie about the birds but frankly it's not all that accurate they're just my fellow colleagues are just a bit crazy I mean they can fly they're mad with power I on the other hand only come out at night. I'm more of a, a night owl, as you can say, as are all of my family. So, uh, where was I going with this tangents, you know? Once you go down one tangent, it's difficult to find where you started off with. My first lesson when coming out of the forest, do not go off course, otherwise you might not know how to return back to the original course. And if you don't know how to return to the original course, you might get lost within the forest and learn how to really assimilate into the deer culture. Otherwise, human sacrifice for you. And I don't want you to be sacrificed. Otherwise, how will I receive my compensation for helping you? Now, to begin, let us begin with the wild plant life. This is talking about Magellan theory and the whole pea pod and genetics. Let's see. I'm trying to find the trees and the flower, well, the trees rather that the deer use as battle fronts, as a way to ambush possible human sacrifices, ignorantly walking through the forest. This tree, for example, though it is only found in the tropics, was designed by the deer life here as a way to more aptly hide themselves away from those wandering. And uh, from these little crevices, they can hide themselves, and they often spring upon those 
wanderers walking by avoid these sort of trees if you see these sort of trees try and do your best to avoid them if you end up being caught you would need to use your powers of assimilation in order to get out of it otherwise you might be sacrificed now to turn on to the next lesson let's see Obviously, as it is well known within these sort of pastures that you see right about here, the deer usually send out a fawn or a doe, and they often send her or it in the middle of this little clearance, this little free space. What you want to do is go nowhere near this. Otherwise, you'll know that this is a trap, because frankly, Whenever human beings see a deer, it is obvious that they try to approach it in order to pet it or whatnot. And uh, when they notice that the deer doesn't run away, that is the time for the other deer who are surrounding the doe or the fawn ambush the unsuspecting individual. And when they ambush them, they drag them over to their campsite or whatever kingdom they have, or whatever the kingdom the great prince has, rather, because they have no rights and they sacrifice the human to their great prince who demands retribution for the murder of his mother who was killed by a hunter and not by a wanderer which is what i constantly try to remind the great prince but frankly the great prince is a great psychopath so there is no reasoning with psychopaths now let's see what else you would need to avoid mountains are if you ever get chased by deers, always try to go through the mountains. There's plenty of places to hide up there in caves, but just make sure they don't see you going into that cave, otherwise you've basically trapped yourself. Hmm. Let's see what else. There are poison ivy within these woods. I would recommend you stay away from them, considering how you are a human being. You know what poison ivy will do to you. But, um... Just stay away from that, otherwise the reaction will give you away. Your skin texture will become more evident to the deer of life around you. And you would be caught as a human being disguised as a deer. And they will torture you for answers and ask who were the ones to help you. The bunny would be safe, but the deer who helped you would definitely be cannibalized. And uh, you would be sacrificed and then eaten. But uh, that wouldn't be cannibalism, of course. That would just be the deers being carnivorous. That is the only plant life you should really be worried about, is the poison ivy. Otherwise, just stay away from places that seem like the deer are e seem like places that deer could easily hide in. And always be wary of deers. They ask you what region you're from. And you ask from Fondlia. Named after fawns, of course. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to be teaching you about the lessons in... War and peace. Right now, as you know, there are rebels within the forest trying to bring back the forest life to the way it was before the Great Prince took the throne. And until then, we will only have war and no peace. I have peace, of course, in my little treetop home, but... And if anyone tries to come into my treetop home, they will know war, but let's see. You're not interested in politics. Not very many are, unfortunately. Here, let me read you a poem by Emerson. The other spectrum, poetry and politics, my speciality. I will flip to a random page. Hmm. Una. Seems like a good poem. Una is a great poem by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and it goes as thus. 
Roving, roving as it seems, Una lights my clouded dreams. Still for journey she is dressed. We wander far by east and west. In the homestead, homely thought, at my work I ramble not. If from home chance draw me wide, have seen Una sits beside in my house and garden plot. Though beloved, I miss her not. The one, but one I seek in foreign places, one face explore in foreign faces. At home, a deeper thought may light. In the inward sky with crystal light, and I greet from far the ray or roar of dearer day. Uh, but if upon the seas I sail, or tundle on the glowing rail, I am but a thought of hers, loveliest of travellers. So the gentle poet's name to foreign parts is blown by fame. Seek him in his native town, he is hidden and unknown. Did you learn your lesson from this poem? Let me read another one then. Let me truly educate you. That way if you die, you die appreciating the life you've already lived and don't squander the last moments you have and regret from not having lived longer. The nun's aspiration, too religious for my taste, frankly. Let's see, heroism? Politics, what a coincidence. Politics, gold and iron are good to buy iron and gold and earth's fleece and food, for they are like our soul. Hinted Merlin wise, proved Napoleon great, nor kind nor coinage buys, up above its rate. Fear craft and avarice cannot steer, cannot rear a state. Out of dust to build what is more than dust, what's Walls Amphion piled, Phoebe established must, when the muses nine with the virtues meet, find to their design an Atlantic seat by green orchard bows fended from the heat, where the statesman ploughs furrow for the wheat, when the church is social worth, when the state house is the hearth, then the perfect state is come the Republican at home. Did you learn your lesson from this poem? What an ignorant, uneducated fool you are. Is that who you are? An ignorant, uneducated fool. Anyways, to assimilate to the culture, just eat grass every now and again. Tread lightly, you know. Don't put too much weight into your footsteps. And what else do they do? They don't speak very much. But then again, who are they? Who is there to, for you to speak to? That's an easy remedy to your quandary, to your problem. But yes, don't speak. Speak, tread lightly, and eat grass every now and again, especially if you're hungry. That's going to be your only reliable sustenance for you to have within these times of your woe. As long as you keep to these rules, you should be able to assimilate properly. Just remember to call the great prince the great prince and note, don't react when you are swarmed by talking carnivorous cannibalistic deer, otherwise they will smell the fear on you. And even if they don't suspect you of being human, they will suspect you of being a weakling, which is not as bad, but they'll still kill you and eat you nonetheless. Keep to your own and follow the trail, the wooden trail, the trail made of wood chips, and that should lead you to an opening where you will be free and let, and you know, where you can prance outside into the world you are more accustomed to. And also, once you make it out, if you make it out, don't forget my retribution, no, my compensation to my library, otherwise you making it out will be a short-lived victory for you. Is that understood? Great.